Hey guys, it's Laura. Welcome back to Chalk with Laura. And we are up for a new project this week. Hope you guys are having a good week. End of September. What day is it? <laughs> I can't remember. Uh, 27th. Oh my goodness. It's, it's crazy. Like time just flies by. I don't know if you guys feel that way, but cannot believe it's almost October, which means that September is almost over, which means that we have some things that are ending in the next couple days. One of which is our beautiful club couture transfer if you've not already joined the club you've got to get in there it's so much fun you get an exclusive transfer and three chalk paste every month and that's at club.chocolatelore.com you're going to also love the october transfer so get in now you can grab this one now and then you'll get october transfer at the beginning of october it's beautiful and um we'll be doing it soon as soon as october comes around so um also ending is a, a giveaway that i'm doing if you order on my website child shop chocolatelore.com anytime in September or you've uh, ordered a kit for me or anything like that in my VIP group then you are entered into a giveaway for a free very peri shimmer chalk paste um, which I'll be giving away here in the next couple days at the end of the month so if you haven't already ordered you can do so and get in on that giveaway uh, we also have select a size transfers on sale for our club members this month so when you're in club and you've signed into my site you'll find those under specials check that out. Um, yeah. So, and lastly, of course, if you've ever thought about doing something like this, you can easily make your own DIY home decor or make gifts for friends or family or earn some extra income by becoming a designer. That's all at join.chocolatelore.com. You can join for as little as 10 bucks and we have a nice new holiday kit available over there as well. Plus, if you haven't already seen the new holiday products on the main site, go check them out. We're going to do a banner today i've got one of our 12 by 18 pennant banners and i've got it on my ink mat already um we are technically not doing ink though um because i'm going to do paste and the reason i'm going to do paste on the banner is number one um i typically would do ink but i don't have all the colors that i want in ink right now i had to throw um some of them out because uh they were empty and i have not uh, i forgot to restock on my last order so Needless to say, I don't have the colors I want for this design, and I'm gonna just do it in chalk paste. Uh, the other reason that I'm okay using chalk paste is because I know I'm not gonna wash this. It's really not gonna get dirty. It's just gonna be hanging on the wall, um, and so it's it's okay. Uh, but I'm still gonna use the ink mat below because it adds a little bit of stability and sturdiness to the the, uh, the pennant banner and kind of holds it in place so that I can do the chalking on top. We're gonna be doing this beautiful Merry Be Your Christmas. This is such a gorgeous design, and I've seen so many other designers that have pulled out different aspects of this, like just the Merry Be Your Christmas and the top and the birds, um, and just do that. Uh, I've, I've seen it on door hangers, round door hangers. I've seen this on towels, kitchen towels. So a lot, lots of great possibilities here, and even just the words Merry, Peaceful, Joyful. Um, is, is just something that you could even do for a year round theme. So it says, Merry be your Christmas, peace will be your home, joyful be your family. So I, I love that um, idea and we're gonna get that going. Now, since we're doing this on fabric, you don't need to fuzz your transfer. You can just put it right down on your fabric and um, I'm going to have it kind of centered up here at the top and make it center down here at the bottom there we go and go ahead and smooth it out on here now this is going to be uh this is going to be uh, where i'm going to do um pro oh, is it stuck yes it is stuck Stuck on my tablecloth. <laughs> I'm gonna get, I stick it to my board instead. That will be much better. There we go. I'm gonna do uh, little bits of it at a time. I'm not quite sure. I've got a couple colors here. I've got forest, which is this beautiful green, that dark green that we used um, last time on the winterscape. We have uh, shimmer gold. We have uh, shimmer shadow, or I'm gonna use black velvet. I'm not sure. And then candy apples. So some real traditional holiday colors. Uh, for our design here and I'm going to just pick out uh, what I know that I want to do which color in. I think I'm going to do the birds in red like make them more cardinals um, 
and I'm going to do some of the leaves, obviously, in the forest, and then um, we'll do the little berries in the candy apple red as well, and I think I'm going to do the words in the gold and black um, is, I think, what I'm going to do. So we'll kind of play around with it, but um, this is, grab some squeegees here. This is a really um, fun design to be able to do. So let's get started on it. I'm gonna start with, uh, I think the birds on the side. I may end up doing the peel and chalk method here, which you guys um, may remember from last time. Uh, because this is paste and it dries a little faster than ink, uh, we may end up doing the peel and chalk method so that I, cause I can do all the, um, the different elements of the design. Uh, there are some that are kind of close to um, others, so it's gonna take a moment to do them. Plus it helps if I don't stick myself to the table, right? <laughs> On the board. But we're gonna do our red birds first and have those be little cardinals. Speaking of cardinals, if you guys haven't checked out the new holiday line, there is a gorgeous Big cardinal available in there. Cardinals always make me think of my dad. He's the one who always told me that they were our loved ones coming to say hi. And of course, since he has passed years ago, I see cardinals and always think of him. I know other people have the same idea for cardinals, so it's not just me. But gorgeous winter cardinal uh, on that design. I'm going to grab... Another smaller squeegee, because I want to do these berries. Ooh, berry, careful, I'm going to touch it. Berries in the red also. And then I'm going to do my leaves and stuff in the, the forest green. And then I'll probably peel back this section and let it dry a little bit. Doggy, say hi. They're snoring away over there. As per usual, right? If you guys have been on any of my videos, you know that the doggies like to snore a lot. That's what they do. They sit around and they snore. Let's do forest. I actually might need a smaller squeegee for this one too because it's got a little bit of space in here. Let's do some forest on these leaves. On the holly. Hope you guys are having a great day and end of the month. We're back into the 80s again, so uh, it's not really feeling very fallish here. We also don't have a whole lot of trees. If anybody else lives in a desert, you, you know you have a bunch of brown stuff, but not really a whole lot of trees. That is one thing I miss about Vermont is the fall foliage, the beautiful fall foliage. We just really don't have a ton of trees here to be able to have that. So, um, I stuck myself to the table again. So, but it is fall and we are kind of on that last hurrah for temperature. I know it's getting colder, um, in the next couple of days. So I think, I feel like this is it. Like this is the, the last warm spell, last hurrah before we really start going down. Um, we've already been really low at night. It's getting pretty, pretty chilly at night. So, but it's hard to believe it's almost October. It's crazy. Crazy. All right, so we've got this whole section done now. And, and I'm gonna go ahead and peel back my transfer because I can see that it's drying. So I'm gonna go and peel back my transfer. This is the peel and chalk method. And we're gonna peel it back. And this is a time where you can check if you have anything that needs to be touched up. Now's the time to lay that back down and do that. A little bit of piece of this berry. There we go. Now, so this transfer does have some um, texture to it already so it's got spots that are already kind of I keep sticking myself distressed in a way but you want to make sure you've got your main stuff taken care of before you pull it all the way back so we're going to put back there now this is a little bit different than our normal peel and chalk I'm actually going to hold it here because I don't really want to lay it back down 
Um, actually, I do. I'm going to lay it back down because I just saw another spot that needs a little bit of touch up. You'll notice I'm really gently laying that down. Making sure that we've got everything else that's good. Sometimes you have to look at the design to make sure that what your space was is the design and not you, you missed something, you know? So um, I'm gonna hold it here for a second though and give this a really good chance of drying a bit. Then I'm gonna lay it back down, but real gentle. And just like we do with all the other peel and chop methods, I'm not gonna touch it. I'm just gonna lay it on there. And I'm working uh, intentionally from top to bottom, even though it's gonna have me going back and forth with colors. I'm intentionally doing that so that we can do this peel and chop method um, and it'll be fine. So I'm gonna do the shimmer shadow and the shimmer gold. And I always recommend that you stir your shimmers just to redistribute, because some of the shimmers have um, specks in them like the shimmer moonlight has blue with uh, gold specks and it just helps with redistributing the shimmer part of it um, and even these even though these are one color shimmers uh, it still helps to kind of redistribute everything so I think I'm going to do uh, the the words big words in the shimmer gold so we're going to do Shimmer Gold here for the Mary. And then I'm going to do the Be Your Christmas in the Shimmer Shadow. And I'm going to go ahead and do the next Peaceful. Because really, this whole section is not very detailed. So I, I and the shimmers, since they do dry, they have a little bit more work time. They dry a little bit slower. I should be able to get the rest of it done in one shebang because I'm going to do the leaf down here in the in the green. So we're going to try. Joyful. And then we'll take the whole thing off and really dry it. And in this case, because I'm not using ink, I do not have to heat set this. I'm not going to heat set this. You do not want to actually heat set anything that you're using a paste on. You only would heat set in the case of ink, using ink, and that makes it permanent, that makes it so you can wash it. Um, actually, I'm a smaller squeegee for these words. Um, but we're not doing that this time, so. Paste works, just, just be mindful of that too. If you're doing something that's in paste, then you just know, okay, I'm not gonna, um, number one, not going to heat separate. Number two, not going to wash it in any way either. So obviously you only do this for something like a, a banner that you know you're not going to use. Sometimes pillows, it depends. My pillows kind of get dirty, so I like to do those in ink. Speaking of pillows, kind of adorable pillow coming up with our new little happy trees. Oh my gosh, the happy trees, just they, they get me. I love the happy trees. It's one of our new holiday transfers. And... Uh, they are so cute and I'm going to use those all over the place. You can do so many things just breaking out those um, trees. And, and uh, of course, one of the things I'm going to do is make a pillow with the trees because they're so cute. All right, so we're going to pull again from the top down. And again, I'm going slow because if there's anything I'm missing, like the corner of this M right here, then you can redo. This is the one difference here with um, with doing fabric is sometimes I try to do a little bit more of a light hand on my uh, chalking with that, and which means that sometimes it, you just need to pay attention and you might have to go over and do another spot again. But as long as you do it while you are pulling off, it's really not a big deal. It goes right back on and then you can really easily touch up. And it's usually just a, a little bit of a fade um, or something you want to make a little bit more pronounced. Um, trying also not to get paste on my shirt because that won't come off very easily. And again, these are real minor, like 
just it's a little bit light in that one letter and I want to make it a little bit darker so I'm putting it right back over and doing that one section again we should be almost done here because I'm almost done peeling it off okay do a little bit more of the shimmer shadow here Stuck to the table again. There we go. Yay. All right. Take a long transfer. Now this is a reusable, so just go wash it. Cool water. And you can reuse it over and over and over again. Um, but let me show you what it looks like before I end up drying it. Oh, cute, right? That's so simple, very easy to do. So again, if you have, this is a great example of something that if you have, um, you know, desire to do textiles and you don't necessarily have all the inks, just choose banners or textiles that you're not gonna wash and go ahead and use the paste that you might already have. Uh, that way it won't hold you back. That was a good one, I just shoved my finger into the red. That way it won't hold you back from doing some of the more textile things. Um, until you get to the point where you're wanting to heat set it like a towel or a shirt, um, something like that, that you know you're gonna need to have heat set to, to be able to wash. And then you've gotta have your inks. Um, just recently did a little sale over in the VIP group with an ink kit. Uh, I think there's one left perhaps. So if you are a beginner and you have not tried ink before, this gives you everything that you would need to try to do an ink project. So you're gonna get a little baby ink mat and a little piece of Teflon paper and some ink um, paste samples. So it'll give you the ability to do um, an ink project. I mean, have a baby wipe over here. I'll try to balance these. I don't have anything over here. Now I've got paste on my hand. I'm gonna rub it in so that I can touch my stuff. Um, Anyway, you can hop over to VIP group, group, group group.chocolatelaura.com. Oops, I need to take it off the ink mat. You'd never want to heat anything on the ink mat, okay? So always take it off. And I'm just going to dry it now, and then it'll be, we'll put the string through, and it'll be ready to go. Um, but there's a beginner ink kit over there in the group that I was offering. So if, uh, that was actually a gift that I gave to my club members, a quarterly gift that I gave to my club members. Um, so if you did not get one because you're not in the club last quarter, then you can go buy it and try out ink yourself. But again, now you know you can chalk paste on fabrics as well. They do take a little bit longer to dry um, than a typical chalkboard project. But once they're dry, they're good to go and then you just don't wash. I love how this turned out. This is such a, a pretty saying. You guys can see it here. And um, I actually, it came with the stick already in the middle. So I just left it there. But I'm going to go ahead and comes with the string and everything that you need to be able to tie. Um, I am going to go ahead and I think what I typically do is I typically put this in and through. So I'm probably gonna take this stick out and I'm gonna feed it through with the stick um, because I like to have my knot and stuff not be able to be seen. So I put it, the leather strap in, so it's now go running through. It's now running through and um, Now I'm going to take it I got to get it to, to move for me. I'm trying to do it while it's still wet so you guys can see what I'm talking about here. There we go. I'm going to drag it and then I'm going to go ahead and let's see that's going up. I don't want 
it's going this way. Put it through the same way. Should have done that when it was out. But that's okay. Put it through the same way. And then, wait a second. It's the wrong way. The, I want to get it tied so that I can slip the knot back in. So I got to come this way and do it this way and go through. Go through this a little bit. I'm getting them lined up so that when I tie a knot, then I can pull it through the back. Oh, they're so noisy today. It's a good day for sleeping, apparently. Actually, in their world, every day is a good day for sleeping. I'm thinking I might just tie a regular knot. I don't know. Maybe I should. I don't know. Right. The whole idea is that I have it so that I can pull it through. But there's not, this isn't as long as some of the other uh, smaller banners. So I'm having an issue tying it in a knot. There we go. So I'm tying it in a knot almost at the end, as far as the end I can get. Okay, and then I'm going to actually pull that side to where it pulls the knot into the bottom of, there's just usually, like you, you have, kind of have to finagle it a little bit, but there's just usually enough. It's, this is a little bit harder because it's kind of leather and so, it doesn't want to pull like the other stuff of the jute. The smaller banners all have jute, and this works really well with the smaller banners. But I'm trying to hide the knot, so I'm pushing it in basically the back of that. That did not go in properly. Knot is actually might be a little too big for what I'm trying to do. It won't let me pull really hard because it's going to bend the, it just pulls the leather. I just need to push it in far enough to where it can get to the end. Come on. I think I got it. Oops. I'm not paying any attention to the fact that this is probably still wet. I need to be a little bit more mindful. There we go. I think I got it. Yes, I did. So I'm stick, sticking it in this little tiny section underneath so that just the edge is far enough in to where you can't see the knot. So the knot is actually right here now. And then I can pull my string, light it up. I don't even know what that was. So pull the string and then I don't have a knot showing. So that was the whole idea. So that I don't have my knot showing. You don't even, you can't even tell. And there we go. So there's our banner. Merry be your Christmas. Peaceful be your home. Joyful be your family. I hope you guys enjoyed this project. We will be back with more holiday goodness soon. I've got so many other fun projects to do with you guys for this holiday season. And um, I know it's a little bit early, but that way it gives you guys plenty of time to order what you need off the website and be able to get it so that you can make uh, your projects in your own home and have plenty of time to display them for the holidays. So that's the whole idea. We're just kind of starting Christmas early and I hope you love it. And I'll see you guys back on our next video. Have a wonderful week, guys. God bless. Bye, guys.